Hallelujah. Before you take your seat, just say, Lord, speak to me this hour. Speak to me in the way that I will understand. Let your name here today be glorified. Let your name be exalted. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, Lord, we come together as a family to say thank you this morning. Thank you because the Bible says the entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. Father, Lord, we pray as your word will come this morning, it will illuminate our hearts. That in every dark area where the enemy has seemed to prevail, that your light will supersede this morning in the name of Jesus. We ask that Christ will be exalted at the end of it all. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. You may have your seat. You're all welcome to church on a beautiful Sunday morning. Delighted to be in your midst to bring God's word to God's special people. Our anchor scripture this morning, it's Isaiah chapter 60. We're going to read the first three verses. Isaiah chapter 60, the first three verses. Isaiah 60, the first three verses. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Everybody say, my light has come. My light has come. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2. For behold, deep darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Stay on verse 2. It says, deep darkness. Right? And there's also another darkness there, but it did not qualify it with that definite article. But there's the word deep darkness. And when we say the darkness over there, that actually is referring to a person. Hallelujah. When I say or oh, a specific thing, when I say uh, go, he is wearing shoe. It is different from when I say he is wearing the shoe. There are two different things. If you, I'm not a grammarian, but I can tell you that. Hmm? There are some days I, I look back at my high school days. I wish I was paying attention in class when they were teaching English language. But I still got a good grade, though, nevertheless. But I wish I had paid more attention. Hallelujah. Verse 3. Let's keep going. <clears throat> Verse 3. It said, The Gentiles shall come to your light. Who is coming to the light? Aha. And the kings to the brightness of your rising. This morning, by the grace of God, I'll be talking about light. I'll be talking about light. And um, if you write in, and I encourage you to write, Right, the topic will be lighted to manifest. Lighted to manifest. <laughs> Somebody approached me after the first service, said, Dickin, that word lighted does not exist. <laughs> I, I, I paid attention in school a little bit. And I, 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 I like doing research. And I said, I'm not going to debate. I'll pull up about three or four dictionaries to you. And I put it open on the phone. And he saw the word. I was like, okay, okay, you are correct. I was like, yeah, I think so. And the word the person was saying, the other word for lighted is lit, right? Is that not correct? It's lit. It's intentional that I put it like this. I wanted to say lit for, to manifest, but the word lit in this current day and time is, <laughs> is different, especially for our younger generation. When they say something is lit, they know what they're talking about. Am I right? Any young people here? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Some people are, are looking like me. But they say that outfit is lit, right? They say the party was what was lit. Now, to our older generation, like the people looking at me here celebrating, coming for, the, he will not understand. True. Or our the ones who are going to be celebrating this weekend, they will not understand. He will not understand. What is lit? That's just the truth. So I put it like this: very intentional lighted to manifest. Please write it the way you understand. Don't write something you will not be able to relate to it. That would be very sad. I look and say, ah, lit to manifest. What is this? But our younger generations, they know what it means to be lit. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise the Lord. Now, um, I talked about the darkness, right? The darkness is uh, it's a person. Uh, some of you may want to debate that. Uh, something interesting happened towards the end of the first service, uh, there was a power outage. Very strange, very rare. 
the light went off for a couple of minutes. I, I found it very strange. Strange particularly because I was talking about light. I'm serious. I sat down and I said, Lord, what are you trying to do? Today I'm talking about light. Power. You know how rare this power outage should happen? I had to apologize to our brother who just came recently and joined us. I was like, look, this is very infrequent. It doesn't happen. Uh, and he was smiling. But I sat down and I was thinking, I had to take a time out. I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? I'm talking about light and light went out. So the Lord put, dropped the word in me. Let's go, let's go back. Let's go to the very first book in the Bible. Genesis chapter 1. Let's go for the, to the very beginning. <clears throat> I have to quickly do this so I can get into the word that I want to minister to this morning. All right. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, I can quote it, but I want us to read it. All right. Media is a little bit slow. Let me just quote it. <clears throat> in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So in the beginning, it was all about God. He's the creator of the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. The earth was without what? Form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. It says darkness was upon what? The face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord was hovering upon the face of the waters. Now, let's, let's stop in verse 2. Now, if you know anything about God, you have been serving this God. You know God doesn't do anything haphazard. He doesn't create things to be empty. He doesn't create things to be void. Is that true? Can I get a witness? Yes. Yeah, something was happening here. Somebody was in charge. And we know the person that was in charge because he tells us, say, and darkness was upon the what? Face of the deep. Somebody was in charge. And just like in people's life, there are people's life that darkness is in charge. There are people's marriages that darkness is in charge. There are in people's family that what? Darkness was what? In charge. And said the spirit of the Lord. Ha. So God was responding to something. He was, he was, he, he said, God was responding to something that has what? That has happened. He said, and the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the water. How did God respond to that thing? Let's go to the next verse, verse, verse 3. Okay. Then God says, let there be light. Now, if you like Hebrew a little bit, it says light be. That's how it's, it's put in the original Hebrew translation. Light be. And there was what? Light. So God's response to darkness was what? Light. God's response to darkness was what? Light. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Hmm, okay. And God saw the light that it was what? Good. And God divided the light from what? Darkness. This is the reason that Jesus and the devil can never meet. Because the Bible says God divided the light from what? The darkness. There cannot be any agreement. People will make a joke. <laughs> Back home, they will be like, in special arrangement, uh, the devil can see Jesus. That is just a joke. Under no arrangement, they have anything in common. They can never meet at each other. Last verse, verse 5, that we we'll, we'll read here. God called the light what? Day. Hallelujah. And he called the, and the darkness he called what? Night. Hmm. I said darkness is a person. Darkness has a personality. Now, if you have a proper Bible and you are paying attention, the night that you see there, is it capitalized? Is it capitalized? Okay. Uh -huh. There are other nights in the Bible. If you go back, there are other times he mentions night, right? And those nights are in small letters. If you go to verse 14, Verse 15, verse 16, I think, when he was creating the sun, he will see where he talked about what. Those are in small, uh, um, let's see. Go to verse 16. You, okay, there's also, yes, there's a night here. You see that night is in what? It's in small letters. There are two different things he's talking about here. Right? But the one in verse 5 is actually referring to what? A person. That, that darkness is referring to, yeah, thank you very much, is referring to what? A person. Many of you must have heard before, and you probably had that experience. You said you were worshipping, and you felt something, right? You felt a presence. And sometimes it manifests in the form of what? Light. So also, darkness, and you hear people, the demonic, they, they also manifest in what? In darkness. You say, I just felt this, ah, there's this presence, dark presence. You get what I'm saying? Now, God's response, hallelujah, God's response to darkness was to do what? Was to bring what? Light. Now, 
that light, do you see the capital letter there? It says, and they call the light, sorry, day. Do you see that day there? Is that a big D? If you are paying attention, your Bible is proper. That day is, is a big what? D. It's not a small D. If you go to verse 16, you're going to see the day there. It's a small D. When he created the sun. Now, a friend of mine said, he said, this is how I was thinking. You know, he said, when there was a problem, right? He said, darkness upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord moved. He said, I would have thought that God would have created, um, created the sun. No, God did not create the sun to solve the problem of darkness. What did God create? He created light. He created what? Light. Hallelujah. Just somebody getting what I'm saying. He created what? Light. He didn't get up. You have to get up to verse 16 where he created the sun. What he created in verse 3, or not what he created, what he said be. I told you the Hebrew translation is what? Light be. And light, was, light came forth. It's different from what you see in verse 16. Hallelujah. Somebody getting this. I had to do this because when that light came off, I started thinking. I said, ah, I'm talking about light. And darkness now prevailed. Father, I refuse it. You know how we pray? In the name of Jesus. But there's light in the house today. Somebody say, I'm a light. Say, light lives in me. It's the truth. Light lives in you. You are a light. Hallelujah. Goodness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say, I'm a light. I'm a light. Let's stay in Genesis 1.16, where God made, where he made the lights. Genesis 1, he said, then God made two great lights. Everybody say two great lights. Two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. Once again, we are seeing the day here. That is not the day we are talking about. Okay. And the lesser light to rule, the lesser light to rule the world. And he also made the stars. Hallelujah. Now, these two things that God made, they are, they are in the physical, but they explain a spiritual reality. I say that again. The sun and the moon, they explain what if it's a physical phenomenon, a physical thing, but they explain, they explain what is a spiritual reality. God, you are the moon. You represent the moon where, God, where the sun is represented by God. That is just why. And the, all this, you see this in the Bible, it's consistent. God used... Um, spiritual things. He used physical things to explain sp spiritual matters. He does that a lot all through for us to comprehend and understand what he's talking about. Now, if you go to Psalm 84, verse 11, the Bible says that for the Lord God is a son and a what? And a shield. Psalm 84, verse 11. For, this, for, the, Lord, for the Lord God is a son and a what? And a shield. Now, it did not say that the son is God. What did he say? He said the Lord God is a what? Son. It's giving a description of who God is. It's giving a description of who God is. God's characteristics can be likened to a son. And if you know anything about the solar system, I loved geography when I was in school. When I, was, I, paid, I paid attention when I was in t taking my geographical classes in school. Yes, I paid very good attention. Everything in the planet Earth, in the solar system, revolves around the world. That's the truth. The earth, the planetary bodies, the, the sun is the center of what? Everything. Everything in this earth grows around the sun. So any part of the earth right now that is experiencing darkness, that part of the earth has turned its back against what? The sun. That's just the truth. Any part of the earth, anywhere, and if you call them maybe in, uh, in back at home and they are in, they're experiencing nighttime, it's because what? The earth has revolved and they got to a point that they are now back in the sun and they are experiencing darkness. So also, the part of your life that is not illuminated by the word of God is that part of your life that you have what turned against the Lord. Is that the part of the word of is that part of your life that you are not obeying God's word, right? All, all aspect of our life as a believer, all aspect of our life as a Christian is supposed, supposed to be illuminated by what? The word of God. It ought to be illuminated. But you, many of the times you see believers, they will do everything right. But they say there's this part, you know, this business, you have to play it according to mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or whatever, my relationship with or living a holy life. Uh, I, will, I will put aside Christian principles. I will put aside my Christian values. But that should not be the case. Because if you are doing that, you are not allowing the word of God to illuminate your life. And if you look carefully, that part of your life that is not experiencing, that is experiencing darkness, 
is that part that you most likely would have turned your back against the word of God. Because the word of God, we say, the Bible says in, in Psalm 119 verse 30, it said, um, hmm, Psalm 119 verse 30 says, somebody help me, hallelujah. Oh, so, oh okay, is that some, okay, 130, 119 verse 130, 130. Uh-huh. He said, the entrance of your word, what? Gives light. So the word of God is light. The word of God is what? It's light. When you turn your back to the word of God, you don't obey it. Darkness is setting. Darkness is going to what? It's going to creep in. So you're going to ask yourself, is there any aspect of my life that I am not, uh, that I am turning my back against? Because when you do, that part we experience darkness. In James 1.17, I love this Bible verse. He said, all good gifts, all perfect gifts, it comes from the Father of lights. I would say Father of lights. With whom there is no variation, neither shadow of turning. The old King James said, who there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Hallelujah. That variableness or shadow of turning, it depicts, it talks about God. God has no variation. When the sun is shining, it is constant. The sun does not go dark. The sun can never shine brighter. The sun is always consistent. It gives its light consistent, and that is the character of God. So when we position ourselves to, to reflect God's light, we also too are going to be like what? A light reflecting God's light. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hmm, praise the Lord. There's a phrase there that I like so much. It says the father of lights. Can you say God is my father? Everybody say that. You don't know the amount of privilege you have to say that. Sometimes when Jesus Christ said something like that, they wanted to stone him. It's the truth. <laughs> Some of the Pharisees, they understood. He was like, how can you, who are you to say that God is your father? What are you saying? But is the, is the honest truth, if you are born again, you are saved. Because of the finished work on Calvary, you are what? You can call God your father. In John 20, verse 17, Christ has just ascended. Uh, he has just gotten up, and he, he had not yet ascended to the Father. He had not. And he was about to go to the Father to present his blood, which is significant of the life that he lived. He lived for you. Hallelujah. Galatians 2, verse 20 said, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ lives in me. He said, The life I now live in the body or in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. The life you live as a Christian, you are living the life of God. That is the life that Christ won for you. It's a perfect life. So Christ was about to go present his body to the Father, to go present that sacrifice. And um, he, he told Mary, say, don't, out of assignment, don't hold on to me. But look at this profound statement that he made there. He said, I am ascending to my Father and your what? Father. And my God and what? Your God. If you are here this morning, I want you to say, God is my Father. God is my Father. God is my father. God is not the father of everybody. You have to realize that. People make generic statements. God is all our father. He is the father of us all. No. That statement is incorrect. It's inaccurate. The Bible says in John 8, 44, it's Jesus Christ is the one speaking. He says, you are your father, the devil. And of the loss of your father, you will what you will do. John 8, 44. He said, and you are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you will what do. So God is not the father. Now, the proper and correct statement is God is the creator, which we saw in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the world, heavens and earth. God made what? All four-legged creatures, the birds that fly in the air and everything. But he's not the father of everybody. If you are here this morning, you are saved. God is your what? Father. How many of you here are, fat How many of you here are good fathers? Good fathers, let me see your hands up. Hallelujah. How many of you know how to give good, 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 good gifts as a father? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Some of the fathers are not confident. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am a father. I know how to give good gifts, including punishments. <laughs> uh, my kids are not here now. I can see that. Um, but God knows how to give good gifts. He is the... <laughs> I think this is in Matthew 26, verse 26, Right? God is not the father of beds, but he also takes care of them. Is that not true? He takes care of them. He's, not the he's just the creator. That's the truth. Matthew 6, 26, I think so. He's just the creator. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't have that legal obligation to want to take care of, 
of the beds. But guess what? The beds are still what? Taken care of. He said, are you not more, more valued than them? He was talking about beds. He said, look at the beds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather in bands, yet your heavenly father feeds them. He's feeding beds. That is not their father. He's just their creator. Come on. He said, then he asked a rhetorical question. He said, are you not more valued than them? Of course you are. You are made in his image and likeness. You can call him your father. Hallelujah. Oh, I love this so much. Sometimes, wherever you are, and you are here this morning, God's presence, you can lift up your hands. Say, Father, immediately you connect. Hallelujah. Immediately you connect. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to look at one more scripture, and then we'll pray. And um, just look at, look at John chapter 8, verse 12. Once again, Jesus Christ was the one speaking. John 8, verse 12. We'll use this to wrap up this morning. Hmm. Father, thank you. Then Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Who is the light of the world? Jesus. Ah, Father, thank you. When I talked about the sun and the moon, I mentioned that the sun is symbolic of God, and what? The moon is symbolic of who? You. Some people, some of us here, we are trying to shine on our own. If you know anything about the moon, the moon does not have its own light. It's just made of rocks. How many of you know that? You could Google it. It doesn't have the ability, it doesn't, have the em it doesn't emit light. It just positions itself and it gets the light from the sun and it reflects that light back. That is all what the sun does. It doesn't, it doesn't have any light of its own. It doesn't. It doesn't. All right. Praise the Lord. Then Jesus spoke unto them, saying, I am the what? Light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in what? Darkness. If there is anything in your life that seems to be dark, as a result of you hearing my voice this morning, and because the light of the word of God has come, I declare that that darkness will stop today in the name of Jesus. He said, but shall have the light of what? Life. Somebody say, I have the light of life. I have it. It's within you. It's within you. You carry light. You carry light. Proverbs 4.18 says, <laughs> all right. Proverbs 4.18, it says, uh, let's, the part of the just is like a what? Shining sun. If you read the, the King James, it says it's like a shining light. It says it shines brighter and brighter unto what? The perfect day. Somebody say, my light will shine brighter. My light will shine forth. <laughs> Amen. Um, the light went off, right? We experienced a momentary, about 10 minutes there about for darkness. Satan is called the prince of darkness. I will explain something to you. I'm, I'm out of time, but I need to explain this to you. <clears throat> he's called, you know why they call him the prince of darkness? Because he's the first one to rule with darkness. That's why they call him the prince of darkness. Now, darkness, please, don't confuse darkness with, with illumination, with light, right? Darkness can manifest itself as a form of, um, just as light can manifest itself with bright light, right? That's why I said sometimes when you feel God's presence so strong, you feel a light. It doesn't necessarily equate God to physical light, illumination, so also darkness. So when, <laughs> when God says, when God says that uh, his light I don't want us to live here saying, thinking of the bright sun. You could come out and look. It can manifest like that. So also is what? Darkness. Praise the Lord. The reason I'm saying this is that the devil, he rules by darkness. And what does he do? Right? He makes people not to believe the word of God. He hides the word of God. He hides the knowledge of the word of God. That is how he's able to operate in darkness. But at the reason of you hearing this word today. I pray that light will illuminate your life. I'm speaking to somebody. If you're not born again, this is not a joking matter. I will pray for you right now. You need to be born again. You, you need God not only to be your creator, to also be what? Your father. The Bible says in uh, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3, He said, if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are what? That are lost or that are blind. Right? And the enemy is the one responsible for blindness. If you, if you look at verse 4, right? Verse 4 says that, um, 
who the God of this world has blinded the mind of them that believe not. He said, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall appear or shine unto them. My prayer this morning, as you hear the sound of my voice, and you, whether you are home, wherever you are in this auditorium, I pray that the word of God will illuminate your life. That if you are not born again, we will take a minute right now to pray for you. Is there any person like that? As, we, as our heads are bowed, you want, to be, you want to be saved. The word of God has come forth this morning to you. You know that you have not given your life. You are the person I'm speaking to this morning. If you are at home, you can get on your knees and start praying. Say, Lord, I receive you to my heart as my Lord and personal Savior. I receive you into my heart as my Lord and personal Savior. Is there any person here this morning? I will pray with you. I did it several years ago. But if there's, not, if there's none, we can pray for ourselves. When the Lord first gave me this word about three weeks ago to speak on, the number one prayer I've been praying every day is that, and I pray this for myself and I pray for everybody, that our light will shine more. Our light will shine more. If your light has been going dim, I declare by the reason of the sound of my voice this morning, your light will shine more and more in the name of Jesus. We read it already, Proverbs 4, 18. It said the path of the just is like a shining word, light. It says it shines more and more unto the perfect day, unto the fullness of the day. Say, Lord, my light will shine more. My light will shine more. Oh my God, Isaiah 60 verse 1, our anchor scripture said, it said, um, arise, shine, arise, shine. Say, Lord, I will, posi I will position myself to shine. I will position myself to shine in the name of Jesus. My light will shine more. No more shall my light longer be dim. When I step into my family, they will know that light has arrived. When I step into my work, they shall know that light arrived. I declare in the name of Jesus that my light will shine forth. My light will shine brighter and brighter. In the name of Jesus, I carry the light of God in me. I carry the light of God in me. In the name of Jesus, my light shall shine forth. My light shall shine forth. In the name of Jesus, my light shall shine forth. My light shall shine forth. In the name of Jesus, my light shall shine forth. No longer will my light be dim. Ha, ah, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My light shall shine forth. My light shall shine forth. Hallelujah. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope for a life spent with you. Yeah, right. 